Hello everybody, how you doing? I hope you're all doing it really well. Welcome back to my channel and to a video I've wanted to film for quite some time and I'm very interested because I love cooking, I love food and everything about being in the kitchen, I just genuinely enjoy it. But I've heard a lot about recipe boxes and subscription boxes that you can get delivered to your door where it takes the hassle out of doing a food shop and also having to think about what you want to eat for lunches for you and whoever you live with, whether you're by yourself or whether you're with a family. And I have a Gusto box just behind me. Here it is. So this was very kindly sent to me to try out, um, to me and Zara to try out for four days. So we have four meals in here for this week and the total was $34.99 as I said it was kindly gifted to me and um, I will leave all of the uh, links down below for you guys I think they do discount codes as well on your first order I think you get 50% off your first box subscription boxes have been around for quite a while so they're not anything new but I don't really use them that all that often just because I do genuinely like to cook from scratch but I'm very interested to see what we're gonna have in here and see whether it's actually gonna be worth it it's gonna be very honest I'm not going to be doing this just because it was gifted to make it a positive review and you're going to get some honest feedback from me as you know I do love my food so let's dig into the box and see what we've got going on but before we do if you could click subscribe and also give the video a thumbs up it helps me out a ton and let me know if you do get recipe boxes at home yourself and whether you do enjoy them. Zara is going to tuck into the box for us so like I say we've got four meals in here so I'm going to be very interested to see if they're actually you know I mean, I'm sure they'll be tasty, but whether or not it's good value for money. So these are the recipe cards that we've got. So as um, myself and Zara are vegetarian, we've gone for four veggie options. And they obviously do them for meat, but they also do them for specific dietary requirements as well. So if you're celiac or if you're dairy free, you can customize them. So these are the four we've got. So we've got a leek and roasted tomato mac and cheese, which looks fantastic. We also have a spanagopia style herby gnocchi, which looks delightful. We also have this, which is a three cheese veg packed pasta bake. That's a mouthful. This looks absolutely delicious. And then we also have a charred pepper bean and cheese quesadilla as well. So we've gone for quite like, I mean, there's a lot of carbs and a lot of cheese. <laughs> you guys know, I'm not going to lie. There wasn't like a massive amount of veggie options and vegan options. Um, so you're kind of limited in that sense in comparison to the dishes that have meat. But I know Gusto are constantly adding recipes that are more suitable for veggies. So that's what we're working with. Four meals. And the great thing as well is they all have the nutritional information. So you've got calories, fat, and the carbs, sugar, which is really handy. All of the ingredients are photographed on the side with the quantities, which are pretty weird. And then your eight steps to getting your dinner. So really good if you're maybe starting out and cooking and you're not the most confident of chefs. And also if you are, you know, going back to work and you've not got the most time that you did um, prior to everything that's gone on, this might be a good option for you. So everything comes ready packed. One thing I will say that's a little bit disappointing sometimes to see is plastic. Like, I feel like maybe, I know a lot of this is cardboard, so a lot of it can be recycled, but I don't know, maybe that would be something I would say is kind of like a negative, definitely, but everything's pre-packed and I guess the paper can be recycled. There's no meat in this one, obviously, so it's just everything in here it needs to go in the fridge. And then this is all the stuff that goes in your dry store. So it's really easy to pack away. Yeah, so it is day one of the Gusto box. And this evening we are going to do some black bean and cheddar tostada. So I'm going to get all the ingredients out and you're going to see what you're going to need. Okay, so we've got some flour tortillas. We have some black beans, cheddar. We have a tomato, a lime, a red onion, a red pepper, and another red pepper. I love these red peppers. They're super sweet. An avocado, some coriander or cilantro, depending on where you're from. And then here is some paprika. And then this is the recipe card, so it's chopped pepper and bean cheese quesadillas. I know I said tostadas, but it's all much of a muchness. So it's ready in 20 minutes, so let's get involved. Okay, so we first need to start by preheating the oven to 180 degrees. And then I grab the two peppers and use the back of a spoon to scrape out the insides and the seeds. And then I just roughly chop them up. They don't need to be too fine for this, guys. And then I do the same with one red onion, just finely slice it and then chop it the other way. And then into a pan or a skillet with some olive oil, I fry down the red peppers and the red onion with a little bit of salt for around five minutes until they start to char and soften. In the meantime, while that's happening, I then grate some cheese. This is cheddar cheese. And then I also just slice up some tomatoes first into slices and then into chunks. And this is gonna go into the salsa. And then I also chop up some fresh coriander or cilantro, depending on where you're from. <laughs> 
Then going back to the peppers and onions in the pan, I just give them another stir. And then I open the can of black beans. These need to be drained and rinsed and then pop them straight into the pan with the onion and the pepper. And then I add the sachet of smoked paprika. This just gives it an amazing smoky flavor that is typical of this kind of dish. And then what you need to do is lay out a tortilla on a bacon tray and add some filling and then some of the grated cheddar cheese and then fold that in half to make your quesadilla. And then I do that three times and then pop another bacon tray on top of the tortilla quesadillas and pop them into the oven. The hot oven tray on top kind of just melts the cheese. You only need them in there for around 10 minutes and they come out beautifully golden brown. And while they're cooking, it's time to just make your really quick and simple avocado guacamole. So using a whole avocado, this was a really large avocado. Just season it with a bit of salt, pepper, coriander, chopped tomato and lime juice. And that is your easy guacamole. Now look at these quesadillas, guys. I just cut them up into thirds. And honestly, this made so much. Considering this is supposed to be for two people, my goodness, there was a lot of quesadillas. <laughs> really nice, quite spicy, lovely and cheesy, and just absolutely delicious. A perfect, quick and easy midweek dinner. So it's day two of our Gusto box and we have got an absolute corker this evening. They're very cheesy meals that we've got going on. So if you're not a fan of cheese, then this probably isn't for you. But I'm going to show you what we're having. I'm so excited for this. It's pasta, it's cheese, it's all the goodness. So this is a recipe card. This is the three cheese veg packed pasta bake. That's a mouthful. This is hopefully the end result. I mean, it's everything that we love. This is nutritional information. This is a list of the ingredients. They're all fairly stock up ingredients, but I've got a can of chopped tomatoes some mozzarella, some rigatoni pasta, we've got some dried basil, some tomato puree, a bit of balsamic vinegar, a vegetable stock cube, also got some basil, a courgette, two cloves of garlic, some cheddar cheese, and some tomatoes. And that is it. I think you need a bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, obviously. But let's get cracking and hopefully in 25 minutes we'll have this to dig into. Right, so to start off with this, I just first crushed up some garlic and then sliced it. And then I added some recently boiled water to a pan. This is for the pasta and then season that. Always season your pasta water, guys. And then in a frying pan, I just sauteed the roughly chopped garlic and some olive oil. And then I halved a courgette and then I roughly chopped that up into quarters as well. Don't worry, guys, your knife sauce haven't got to be amazing for this. And then I just added that into the pan with the garlic on a fairly low heat just so the garlic doesn't burn, just to soften down the courgette. Then I made the stock by adding a stock cube, some dried sage, tomato paste and balsamic vinegar, and some recently boiled kettle water. And then I also added some caster sugar. This adds just like a sweetness to the seasoning of the amazing stock. Then it's time to grab some tomatoes. These are just some cherry tomatoes and I just halved these and then they were ready to pop in the sauce. Now it's time to cook the rigatoni to cook in instructions and add the stock to the courgette garlic mix along with some chopped tomatoes and then the chopped cherry tomatoes and this is your nice tomato sauce. It just needs to reduce and simmer down for around 10 minutes while the pasta is cooking. And then I just chopped up some nice fresh basil and tore up the mozzarella. This was an amazing mozzarella, honestly. So impressed with the quality of ingredients from Gusto. Really, really nice. And then I just grated some of the cheddar cheese And then I added the rigatoni to the tomato -y sauce. I saved a bit of the pasta water as well, just to make it nice and creamy. But look how good this looks, guys. It was the most amazing sauce. And then I added the pasta to a dish. It says add half to the dish and then add your three types of cheese. So your mozzarella, your cheddar, and your parmesan. And then once you've added that half, top it with the rest of the pasta and then repeat with three types of cheeses. So it's kind of like a cheesy layer in the middle of your pasta bake. Sounds a bit weird, but trust me, it works. It just turned out so cheesy, so good, oh my God. Pop it into an oven for around 10 to 15 minutes until the cheese is melted and gone nice and golden brown. And that is your three cheese pasta bake, done. Look at that, it is oozing. Oh my goodness, guys, so good, so quick, so easy. And if you like your cheese, this one is made for you. Look at that, oh, oh my God. Makes me so happy watching this. Sweet. 
So it's the third and final dish of this week and it is an absolute corker to finish on. We are going to be doing a delicious leek and roasted tomato mac and cheese. I also did get a fourth dish in this but I filmed it for Instagram so if you want to check that out I'll link it down below. I'm going to show you the ingredients and everything you're going to need. So this is hopefully what we're going to end up with. This, this is the leek and roasted tomato mac and cheese. I mean yes. If a recipe ever had something written all over it, then that is for us. So, you're going to need some rocket macaroni, you need some balsamic vinegar, some mustard, we've got some parmesan hard cheese, which is Italian hard cheese, which is suitable for vegetarians. I know I do get a lot of people saying that parmesan actually isn't vegetarian, but you can get hard cheese that is suitable for vegetarians. We've got some breadcrumbs, we've got some clotted cream, a shallot, Three lots of cheddar cheese, I think this totals 120 grams, some cherry tomatoes, and a leek. Also, I just had a quick look at the recipe. You're all gonna need some olive oil, some salt, some butter, some milk, we're using oat milk, and flour. This makes like your white cheese sauce roux. Okay, so to start off with this, I've topped and tailed a leek, cut it in half and washed it just to get rid of any excess grit and dirt, and then I just finely sliced that up with a knife, and then also do the same with a shallot, just slice that down lengthways, and then the other way to just get it nice and small, and then I add the butter to a pan and just melt that down. It looks like quite a lot of butter, but this makes your sauce. And then in a separate pan, I add some recently boiled water and cook the macaroni to, I think it was around eight minutes in total. You don't want to fully cook it because it obviously needs to bake as well. And then into your saucepan or skillet, add your chopped leek and chopped shallot, along with two tablespoons of flour into the melted butter once they've softened down. And this makes your like roux. So make sure that you cook your flour out, otherwise it can be a little bit of a weird taste. And then add your milk slowly and gradually once it reduces and thickens up. And this makes, it, again, your roux, this is like your white sauce for your mac and cheese. And then add clotted cream. I've never added clotted cream to a white sauce before, but trust me, it made all the difference. Now I'm just adding in some of the Dijon mustard, again, just a nice season, adds a lovely warmth. And then it's time to add your cheese to make a cheese sauce. This was just, oh my lord, guys. This is a good cheese sauce, trust me. Bit rich, but it's amazing. And then I don't actually strain my macaroni, I just add it straight from the pan. The pasta water actually loosens up the sauce. I find that if you add too much milk, it just gets too heavy. And then it was time to add the parmesan, and I slowed this bit down because, oh my lord, look at that cheesy goodness, wow. Now it's just time for seasoning. I didn't add any salt, but I added some black pepper. Then it was time to make the nice parmesan breadcrumb topping. So you just stir in the breadcrumbs with the parmesan and then add in your whole cherry tomatoes on top. Yeah, I didn't actually halve these and then just pop on the parmesan breadcrumb topping and pop that into the oven for around 20 minutes just until the cheese topping is nice and golden brown. And oh my goodness, guys, look at that. Oh, amazing. The tomatoes just start to kind of like bake and they just go super juicy in the middle. And you can just serve that up. Oh my, honestly, this just makes me so excited. This is one of the best mac and cheeses I've ever had. So simple, just with a nice rocket side salad and a bit of balsamic vinegar. And truly, guys, that is one amazing mac and cheese with tomatoes. So that is everything. That is our three delicious recipes midweek that you can have with a Gusto box or you can just make them at home. Do you know what? Overall, generally very impressed. They were really easy to make, super tasty, enough for leftovers and just really nice. But if you have enjoyed this video, as always, guys, do smash the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click subscribe and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.